Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining today for Dicentra's latest webinar on listing a dietary supplement on Amazon. My name is Corey, and I'm the marketing manager for Dicentra. And today, I'll be your host. Today's webinar will take you through the recently posted requirements by Amazon for businesses that are wanting to list supplements on their website. We will look at all of Amazon's new requirements and try to make sense of it. We are scheduled today to go for about 30 minutes, but there's a lot of content, so we might go over a little bit and uh, we'll try to wrap up at around 1.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, unfortunately, we don't have time to be taking any questions, but as always, if you do have any questions about this webinar or any other regulatory affairs matter, you can reach out, out to us at any time by replying to your invite or by contacting us on our website at www.dicentra.com. All right, let's get started by giving you an introduction to who we are and what we do. Dicentra is a contract research organization and professional consulting firm that specializes in addressing all matters related to safety, quality, and compliance for all product categories in the life sciences and food industries since 2002. We evaluate, implement, and provide all of the necessary support for your products and operate operations, allowing you to gain market access while building confidence in your brand. We achieve this through our four business divisions life sciences consulting, food safety and quality consulting, global certifications, and clinical trials. Joining me today from our life science division is Jared Kwong, who is our regulatory affairs and quality manager. Jared is a self-driven regulatory and quality professional who brings over 15 years of regulatory affairs experience in the food, supplement, cosmetic, and pharmaceutical industries. Much of his experience was gained working with direct selling companies with a U.S. base. He also brings with him experience working with the working through FDA audits and developing quality assurance and compliance programs. Welcome to the webinar, Jared. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Corey. <clears throat> Good to be here. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining me today. Um, I'm excited to be able to speak on this topic. I know that it's been an issue for many of you. And I hope that my comments will have some use to you and that, that uh, you'll all be able to move forward with your listings with Amazon. So uh, last quarter in of 2020, sometime in December, I believe, Amazon just started rolling out these updated requirements for dietary supplements that were sold on their website. And to my knowledge, they, they did this really without any discussion with the manufacturers or sellers on their site. It was, it was a big surprise. So, so where did this come from? You know, why, why were they doing this? Um, and, and, and I can't, you know, stay for certain, but in doing some research, it seems that, you know, early in, in 2020, a company called Now Foods, it's a dietary supplement manufacturer that had set up their own testing facility and was wanting to compare their quality products, you know, with competitors out there on the market. So they they went out and and went to Amazon and they purchased products with you know CoQ10, phosphos phosphatidylserine, and alpha lipoic alpha lipoic acid, and they started testing all these products and comparing it to theirs. And and the results were actually quite astonishing. They their claim is that very few of those competitor products that they tested were meeting the claims of the active ingredients on their labels. They, they sent samples to a third party and verified their findings, and they sent those findings to Amazon. Now, I don't believe that Now Foods ever received acknowledgement or, or, or any sort of word from Amazon. Just like I said, in December, Amazon just started rolling out these requirements to to dietary supplement sellers on their site, you know, and and Amazon did this, I think, justifiably so, to to try to increase the quality of products that it that it sells on its site and and decrease its own liability of those lower quality products. And they're not the first ones to do it. Many other retailers have already done it. But that was, I think, kind of the straw that broke the camel's back for Amazon, and they. They started rolling this out. So what exactly does Amazon require? 
Um, they on their website, this, their Seller Central website, their policy for dietary supplements sold on the site is that all dietary supplement products must meet FDA standards for dietary supp supplement labeling under 21 CFR 101.6 and uh, follow good manufacturing practices for dietary supplements under 21 CFR 111. Now, these are things that, that products and, and manufacturers should be doing anyway. Amazon's general statement about their, their policy on, on dietary supplements isn't anything new, and it's something that should be done anyway. The, the hard part will come in, in how they enforce this, and, and we'll talk about it. So let's, let's talk about exactly what they're requiring. They provide a lot of details. They actually have a compliance checklist on their website, and it kind of gives some do's and don'ts of what Amazon expects for all products on their site. Most of them fall under that general statement that they, they need to meet the supplement labeling and GMP rules, um, but some of them are a little different. Um, first of all, supplements must be sealed in the original manufacturer's packaging. They must be new and unused. They must have a lot number or batch number or some sort of identifier on, on the product. Um, their label must be in English and must have the name of the dietary supplement, the total quantity or amount of the dietary supplement, for example, 100 tablets or you know five sachets or or you know or six ounces or or whatever it may be. You've got it give the total. It must have a supplement fax panel. It must have an ingredient list, and it must also have the name and address of the manufacturer, packer, packager, or distributor. Um, the supplement label must not state that the products cure, mitigate, treat, or prevent a disease in humans unless it is that statement has been approved by the FDA. And you know all of that that they that I just listed, those are things that should be done anyway. Like none of that is, all of that is part of being compliant with the 21 CFR 101. That's all part of supplement. Um, some other things, the supplement must not claim that the products have the same effect as a controlled substance or a prescription drug. Now, Amazon doesn't even want you to use names that could be confused with controlled substances. Um, names like Viagrex or Testosterex, those are things that Amazon will, will not approve, they, they don't want. Um, supplements can also not, uh, not claim that they are FDA approved or even have the FDA logo on their label. Um, I know that's something that FDA doesn't like either, so. Uh, Supplements also cannot be tester, not, not be tester products or they not for resale or not intended for sale. The products that are sold on Amazon should be labeled for resale and should be for retail sale. Um, that's all the, the labeling requirements. Now the details page, the, you know, the page that is posted on Amazon's website, website for consumers to review, those will hold a lot of the same requirements as the label. Um, it's got to have the name of the dietary supplement. It's got to have an ingredient list. It also must include an image of the ingredient list from the product label, the ingredient list or the, or the supplement facts panel. Now that image is important and we'll talk about it later because that's part of the proof that Amazon will require. Um, and then just like the label, the detail pages cannot state that your product will cure, mitigate, treat, or prevent any disease unless that statement's approved by the FDA. Um, you all, again cannot have your product have the same effect as a controlled substance or a prescription drug. You can't um, even suggest that your product can can um, is an alternative to a prescription. 
drug, or that's even as effective as, as a prescription drug. You cannot claim your product you know, has an effect similar to that of anabolic steroids, such as legal steroids. It cannot have the FDA logo on there. And again, it cannot say that it's FDA approved. You know, and, and in addition, you cannot put keywords for your products that include disease names. Um, and speaking about the product and ingredient requirements, the F, uh, Amazon requires that your product not be named in an FDA recall or safety alert. Your ingredients cannot be um, on any prohibited list by FDA. <clears throat> they cannot be part of a warning letter identified as being adulterated um, or misbranded. They, the supplements must be safe for use and must not have or uh, not present any unreasonable risk of injury or illness, such as products that would contain pure powdered caffeine. Um, Amazon will also not allow your product if you are subject of an FTC warning letter or 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 any action from FTC for making untrue marketing claims. Your your product cannot um, contain any controlled substances. And interesting, they list they list out those substances as, you know, anything on the the schedules one, two, three, four, or five of co the controlled substances act, and that includes cannabidols, CBD, which is a schedule one controlled substance. Um, something specific to to Amazon is that Amazon under its own policy will not allow substances or supplements, sorry. Amazon will not allow supplements that contain ingredients that were derived from sharks, whales, dolphins, or porpoises. They also have a requirement that supplements not contain more than 12% hydrogen peroxide. They, Amazon will not allow any patches that are, that are marketed as dietary supplements or that are detox products, um, those are prohibited on them. Also, male enhancement supplements with the brand name of Rhino are prohibited. Not all male enhancement supplements, interestingly, just the ones that have the brand name of Rhino. Um, after this checklist on the website, Amazon also lists uh, hundreds of products that they have deemed non-compliant and prohibited or being sold. It's not an exhaustive list, but they, they literally list hundreds of products that they have deemed that are not compliant and prohibited. That's a list you don't want to be on. I don't know how they came up that list or, or where exactly that list is from, but if you are interested, there's hundreds of products listed on the end of that checklist on Amazon. So those are all the detailed things that Amazon requires of your product in order to be sold on Amazon. Um, like I said, a lot of that is stuff that should be done anyways, even if it, if you weren't posting on Amazon, um, then those are most of those are requirements that you would still need to meet anyways, just to be compliant with the FDA regulation. Amazon is just kind of enforcing those regulations in regards to you know your content. Um, eat, like I said, even if you're not selling on Amazon, you shouldn't be making claims that your product is safe or the same as a drug. They should be truthful and not misleading. Um, you you shouldn't um, use FDA's logo. You shouldn't um, claim to cure, treat, mitigate, or prevent any disease. Right? Your product should be safe and efficacious regardless of whether you sell at Amazon or anywhere else. So um, here's the tricky part now is 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 what Amazon requires is proof. Now there's there's a few things that Amazon will require that you submit to them to show that you're meeting FDA standards for and, and good manufacturing process. And the first thing is a certificate of analysis 
receive A from an ISO IEC 17025 accredited laboratory. Now that's not something that FDA requires. That's a specific requirement from Amazon. And, and this could be an in-house lab or a third-party lab. And, and when the lab that tests your product, it doesn't need to have that ISO certification for every test that they're performing. They just, Amazon just requires that the, the lab be certified in some tests, um, that ISO certification for some tests. And by being, being able to certify any test to ISO, 17025, Amazon feels that that's sufficient proof to prove that that laboratory is a good quality laboratory. So that's why they, they have chose that as a requirement. Now the certificate of analysis from this approved lab, Amazon requires that it, that it has certain elements. Uh, the C of A must have the product's name it must also have the batch number lock code or some sort of identifier, uh, a finished product's uh, manufacturing number or, or something to identify that product, um, specifically that, that product that was being tested. The, the report must also have the name and address of that accredited laboratory and the results of obviously from the assays to that support your your ingredients that were on your, your supplement fact panel at the concentrations that you're claimed on your um, the method that was used must also be on the report as well um, all the ingredient names all the ingredient names that are on the report should match the supplement facts panel on your label um, also the 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 units of measure you know, milligrams or grams or whatever, those also need to match what is on the label. Amazon wants wants it wants to be able to easily compare this C of A with your label. They don't want to do the math to convert the units of measure. They don't want to try to figure out which ingredient goes what. They want you to to line it all up. So once you've got the C of A, you you've got to submit this to the to Amazon, and that C of A needs to have been with issue needs to have been issued within the past nine months. You know you can't send one that's for a product that's expired or have an expired product off your your retention shelf tested and use that. Um, and the C of A must be in PDF format, and it must be accom accompanied by legible product images. And that's the second thing that they required that I, and I also talked about it in there um, earlier in the requirements that they have is they want product images of the supplement facts panel, the ingredient list. These images have to be, to be clear and legible. They want to make sure you have a picture of all sides of the product. Uh, that includes, like I said, supplement facts panel ingredient list. They want a picture of the name of the product to make sure they, it's, you know, it's the right product. They want a picture or image of the the brand owner, the name and address of the uh, distributor. Amazon wants all these images to be clear and legible. They can, like I said, compare. Um, and then the third thing that Amazon is looking for is th that is there your proof is called a letter of guarantee now this letter is from the brand original brand owner and must be on their letterhead and basically it must attest that your product um, meets good manufacturing practices under 21 CFR 111 you have to attest that you only use lawful and safe ingredients as defined by section 402 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. And also that the concentrations for which you have your active ingredients are safe for consumption. Um, you also need to make sure that the, the name of the product on the letter is matches that that's on the C of A and matches is on those product images. Um, 
the so in as an alternative to doing this amazon has is allowing that if you are um, a member or have a certification from a third party um, a third party independent quality certification program then you are you you can be exempt from providing the c of a and the letter of guarantee now currently the the organizations that amazon is accepting are nsf international sport uh, that's important to note it's the international sport not just regular nsf also the banned substance control group the informed choice or informed sport certification, or active participants of the USB dietary supplement verification program. So if you if you have any of those certifications on your product, then you are exempt from the C of A and the letter of guarantee. So those are the things that Amazon requests that you submit as proof that you you meet their general requirements of meeting the dietary supplement labeling laws and the, the manufacturing practice law. Um, how are we gonna, how can you comply with these requests? Like I said, a lot of it you should be done anyways, but some of it, you know, they're tricky. And I, I key to, to Amazon really paying attention to the detail. It, it sounded repetitive, but you know, make sure everything matches. C of A, all the images, they all need to match. Now, of no Amazon's requirements for the C of A are different than what many laboratories are used to and what generally I've seen put on C of A's. Or, so uh, you need to make that all those product names, ingredient names, the same, and the units of measure are all the same on the C of A. Um, it's it's making sure that it's easy for Amazon. I feel like I know that if I if I had to go through and you know, the name masked units of measure, that would be frustrating to me. So making sure those details in the which. You're, you've got that, that might be easier for you, but for you and when I have done this in the past, I've had to use third party labs to do the test. You know, it might be difficult at first to work with these labs um, to, to fulfill all of Amazon's requirements to get the certificate of analysis looking exactly the way Amazon wants it to look. Um, building that relationship with your third party lab is going to be key on that one. You're going to want to make sure that you, you have a lab that is so certified that you can work with, that is willing to work. With. And I think initially, of course, it's, it might be difficult, but as you work together, you know, companies are, are requiring the, asking the lab for those, that format, that Amazon format. I think it'll be easier. So, so just make sure that you have a good working relationship with your lab, whether it's in house or third party. Make sure you have a good relationship. Um, for the product images that you have to submit to Amazon, I don't think you need a fancy camera or a professional studio, you know, to take pictures of your product, you know, to make it all fancy or anything. But you know, those pictures need to be usable by Amazon. They need to be clear and legible. The whole wanna they want to to compare these things. And many of you might have been doing reach for this. I, I reached out to Amazon multiple times and I've noticed that a lot of the interaction that I had with Amazon both, you know, in this and personally, for shipments or things that I've purchased on Amazon, my interactions with Amazon, a lot of them are anim uh, automated. It, you know, know how to be running their 
you know, at their corporate office, they're going to have actual employees reviewing all these documents, you know, approving and passing them. But it may be AI that that is scanning these pictures and images of your product and, and comparing the PDF of the C of A. Maybe why that they're asking for formats and for their pictures. Maybe AI you know, reviewing and approving your stuff. So it's important regardless if it's an actual person or AI, to have clear images. I would suggest, you know, even if you're taking these with your cell phone, just double check, take a look at the images, make sure that they're clear, make sure that they're legible, you know, make sure you, you know, turn on an extra light or something to, to, to have clear, legible images. Make sh you know, I would personally look at all the, the images and, I guess do what I assume Amazon would do and check your supplement facts panel. Make sure the ingredient names on the images that you do match the CLA. You know, the, the product name and the lot number is all match. I would do a double check personally before I submit it to Amazon to, to make sure that my images are legible, that they do match and everything's in order. Again, pay attention, paying attention to the detail. Um, and then the the last name, the let that letter of guarantee, that doesn't have any specific format. You know, you can write that letter any way that you want, as long as it meets those those. Things. I would write it word for word the way Amazon has listed in their requirements. You know, I, you know, a manufacturer that um, is the seller of B supplement. You know, hereby um, attest that my product, product B, is is manufactured under good manufacturing practices as listed in 21 CFR, you know, signed and dated. You know, this is something, th these requirements that you're attesting to aren't new. These are things that you should be doing anyway. So... You know, whether your product is manufactured in the U.S. or internationally, all dietary supplement products should be manufactured. All products, you know, should be of ingredients that are lawful and, and safe. All, you know, all, all it, products should have ingredients that are at safe levels for consumption. These are things that should be done anyway. So attesting to this shouldn't be difficult. Just like I said, I would work write word for word what Amazon lists as the requirement and attest to that and sign off on it. And and for those of you who use third party manufacturers, you may have to ask your manufacturer to provide you a letter, provide you a letter of guarantee stating that they manufacture it under you can then attest to Amazon that, that these products are manufactured. Um, in in regards to the the ingredients, you know that's something you'll need to verify. You you I I know for a fact based on warning letters from FDA that there are there is an issue with products that that are manufactured that may contain drug ingredients or other or other substances that are not safe that may not even be declared on the label. And and I think that's where Amazon is coming from, that they want to make sure that you know you you verify that your product doesn't contain any substances that are not safe and and that's something you, you have to work out with your manufacturer if you're manufacturing a third party or you really need to know what, what's in your product, whether you, you own the formula or not. You you may even have to work with your raw material suppliers to get information about the ingredients. Just you know, just to make sure these. This is something like I said that you should be doing anyways to make sure that your product's safe. Amazon wants you to attest to it. You really should verify your formula and make sure that your ingredients are safe, and not only safe, but at levels that are safe. So, um, Amazon mentioned you know pure powdered caffeine not being allowed. Even just caffeine in general is not a, you know, at at different levels, 
can be not safe. So you want to make sure that the, the levels that you have in your product are safe. Um, again, reviewing your product, reviewing your formula to make sure that things are safe. And once you're confident that you've now met all these requirements, you put that you know letter of guarantee on on your letterhead and sign it again making sure that the product names on the letter are the same as the c of a and the product label in the the letter of guarantee you don't have to do one for every product either you could list all of the the products that you under your brand or you could list all the products that are manufactured at a specific facility list them all on the same letter but again make sure that those product names match the product names on your label or C of A. Um, once you you've got all those um, you can submit that doc those documentation to Amazon for approval. Again we don't know what the inner workings of the Amazon approval process are whether it's a person that goes through all the documents, whether it's AI, whether you know, it's a combination of the two. We don't know. So that's why I said it, it's important to pay attention to the details and try to make sure that all the documents basically match the names, the ingredients, the units of measure, the, the, the lot numbers. Make sure everything matches before you hit submit. And then um, the... I have on the screen here kind of the instructions from Amazon how to do it. You know, you, you know, in Seller Central, click the inventory menu. I've never sold a product on Amazon, so it was new to me. Um, you go in, you search for the ASIN, um, and then when it says there's limitations, you click the link and you attach your documents and you request approval and it starts the application. So uh, once you click submit, I mean, that's, you can just cross your fingers, but if you've done your due diligence, if you've kind of done things beforehand, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, so the, the deadline for the Amazon's new requirements, when they originally posted in December-ish, the deadline was February. It was right now. That by the end of this month, Amazon was hoping to have everybody compl be compliant otherwise you know, there'd be repercussions. unofficially i you know i can't say for certain unofficially i've heard reports that amazon has pushed this out to me um so there's there's still time if you haven't complied with all of their requirements yet. i would get it done sooner than later because initially the deadline was february but, it, and, but like I said, unofficially, they may have pushed it out. Um, things that Amazon could do if you don't meet their requirements by whatever their enforcement date may be, is they could remove the, rel the relevant product listing from their site. They'll remove your posting. They can suspend your ability to, to post anything, whether you know list or even list anything. Take that, taking away your products. They can withhold payments that are due to you. Um, they can pursue legal action. And they even have a caveat on there that they can take any action, any further action that they, that they deem necessary, their sole discretion, anything they want to do, they may do if you don't comply with, with their requirements. You know, Amazon is taking this whole thing very seriously. Um, they've kind of, you know, set the bar pretty high, you know, for the products that that are sold on their site. You know, but I think I think they're still working out some of the kinks. They kind of jumped out of the gate and and set these things. Honestly, when I started re researching this topic in December, um, I attended webinars from uh, our colleagues at the Council for Responsible Nutrition. Um, I was reading articles and, and reading online experiences that others were having with Amazon. And you know, as I started really preparing for this webinar, I went back and, and looked at Amazon's Seller Central website. And you know, all of a sudden, 
some of those requirements had changed. Like initially, you weren't able to use a third party quality certification like NSF International School. That was not a that was not a, a an exemption at the time. That's something new that kind of Amazon snuck in, in in the dead of night, so to speak. And and it wasn't more than maybe a week or two between the time I first read those requirements on Amazon's site to when I went back these changes. You know, I don't know what triggered Amazon to make the changes, but it seems to me that Amazon is definitely listening or now trying to get ideas or or somebody has Amazon's ear for sure that they're that they're making uh changes to those requirements. So uh my suggestion is that if if your lab isn't 17025 ISO ISE 17025 certified, but it does have some other certification or accreditation that you believe is acceptable. You know, reach out to Amazon. Um, I don't think it hurts to 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 put a bug in their ear, so to speak. Um, now, whether you reach out to them directly or through an association, I think it it's definitely a good idea that that we all work together, you know, and I think there's still time to collaborate with each other and with Amazon and with any other retailers that are out there. I can't, I can't guarantee that by talking to Amazon that the Amazon, that they, they'll change their requirements for your product. And so at, at this point, that's all you can do. You can try to work it out with them, or you really, if you want to sell your product on Amazon, you just have to comply with their requirements. You know, Amazon's not the only one or the first one who've kind of created their own standard. Many different retailers have, you know, done this before. It's been a couple of years since CVS and, and Walgreens have had their own retailer-specific compliance requirements, you know. And and actually, more and more retailers seem to be preparing or or considering implementing their own sets of rules. And you know, as this happens, it's becoming more and more a burden. You know, for, for many of you, maybe you're just selling on Amazon. But as your business grows, you may branch out. And and if this trend continues, it will become a burden to you and to all manufacturers to try to comply with so many different requirements, you know. Jumping through the hoops of Amazon, jumping through the hoops of CVS, jumping through the hoops of you know Walgreens, and eventually you know Costco and and Walmart, and you know, everybody will have their own set of standards, and I think that that will increase the time it takes you to to create and and produce and and market a product. It'll increase the cost. You know, at the end of the day, I really think that pattern will hurt the dietary supplement industry. Um, you know, I I don't think it's a bad thing that manufacturers um, hold, I mean, retailers hold manufacturers accountable and, and kind of increase, set that bar a little higher to, to, to make people be more compliant. You know, I think all of you listening are in general good players in in the game you know you you're here at this webinar because you want to be compliant but you know there 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 are companies out there who like to fly by the dead of night and fly under the radar and make things or whatever else and and so I I don't think it's a bad thing that that these retailers are trying to hold people to a higher standard but I do believe that if that there needs to be harmonization to the requirements because we really can't jump through everyone's different set of hoops. That's just not sustainable to anybody, really. Um, so Dicentra is a member of the Council for Responsible Nutrition. You know, we've been working with them and, and go to their meetings. CRN, our Council for Responsible Nutrition, has been working with uh, another association, the Global Retail and Manufacturer Alliance, 
to try to get retailers, manufacturers, trade associations, and certification bodies together, you know, to collaborate and create standards that are harmonized that everyone can agree to as a group. You know, everyone trying to work together to strengthen the safety and quality of the dietary supplement industry. And 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 that's what we hope, and they all hope that we can through collaboration get things harmonized. You know, it's it's a it's it's a long process and it's difficult because you know the it's important to have everyone work together and the more people that can come to the table and communicate the better you know i really think that this the whole issue with amazon's requirements and everyone else's requirements is that we all need to work together you know, the government the fda the industry retailers manufacturers trade associations, certification bodies, the laboratories, even the consumers, we all have a voice in how this works and, and how it can benef benefit each other. And I think having one standard that everyone can agree to make, will make it easier for companies to make safe and quality products and, and kind of weed out those bad players that are making outrageous claims or using unsafe products. Um, you know, specific to Amazon's requirements, these these requirements are new for us and for them. So as we as we work together, as we are outspoken and and try to work things out, I I think that the the requirements, what they are currently, could change. You know, so I think before you post your product to Amazon, make sure to go back and read those those requirements. Like I said, within a week, I noticed that they had been adjusted. You know, but at the end of the day, do your best to comply. Don't be rude. Don't be mean. You know, we're we're all in this together. And so, as you establish relationships with your manufacturers, as you establish relationships with your laboratories, you establish a relationship with Amazon and and try to meet those requirements. You know, we'll we'll all be able to get through this. So, you know, if you need help. You can reach out to your colleagues. You know, you can reach out to your associations like CRN or, or sorry, Council for Responsible Nutrition or the the Global Retailers and Manufacturers Alliance. You can you can always reach out to us at Dicentra. We're always willing to help. Um, you can contact us on our website or anything. We're we're here for you. And I think, like I said, as we all work together, we can you know use our voices to try to make the industry as a whole a better place. And, and and I think we can all do it. So thank you for your time this afternoon. I wish you all the best. And I, I, I want to turn some time over to Corey to close this up. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jerry, for, uh, for, for that presentation. It was uh, very enlightening, very insightful. Um, now, for those of you who are who still stuck around, I uh, just wanted to quickly go through uh, a little bit of what Dicentric can do for you from uh, from our perspective. Um, in addition to uh, you know working with the CRN and the different associations and uh, trying to, to try to stay compliant with uh, with uh, Amazon. So, first and foremost, uh, clinical evidence, uh, scientific substantiation uh, from clinical evidence is invaluable for for those of you who are still trying to um, meet uh, meet the requirements and also be able to use uh, health claims for dietary supplements. So um, we can we work uh, with our clients to analyze any existing data and identify all necessary data required for a strong submission. Um, and uh, coordinate and manage these studies with leading partner laboratories as well as uh, using our own research clinic in downtown Toronto to con conduct human trials in-house. So how do we do that? We are a CRO uh, in, the, in, in the industry, in the dietary supplement industry. Uh, we are located in uh, downtown Toronto in Yorkville and uh, we work um, with many clients uh, to design and conduct studies with uh, the highest regard for patients' uh, safety in mind, uh, as well as data quality and uh, ICH, GCP, or global uh, um, you know, good clinical practice compliances. 
uh, while providing a convenient, accessible, and comfortable uh, clinic space for our participants and clients. Um, we, we have uh, certain capabilities within our clinic that uh, is mainly due to kind of where we're located within Toronto. We have, you know, we have the uh, NNHPB that uh, watches over us as our kind of our regulatory watchdog and uh, also where we're located in Yorkville. We um, have access to over 3 million people with diverse backgrounds of health statuses. So uh, with the surrounding Toronto area in included on, on top of that, there's another 3.5 million. So that's about 6.5 million uh, people that we can, uh, we can recruit from. Um, and within our clinical team specifically, our capabilities include uh, over 450 clinical trials across our team. We've got over 200 publications across our team. You know, uh, we've been in business um, actually for 19 years, 20, 2021 now, and uh, 1,200 cl clients globally. We've got six, we're in Hospital Alley in Toronto, so we've got six hospitals in walking di distance of our clinic. We've got a robust participant database, and, uh, and like I said before, 6.4, 6.5 million people within one hour commute from our clinic. And of course, at the end of the day, the number one priority we will pay to you, our clients, and devote uh, that priority to your projects, the clinical trial project. Um, so, if you stuck around to the end, thank you. Um, you know, we uh, we really appreciate these uh, these webinars, and uh, like to thank everyone for joining us. Um, and uh, also, I'd like to thank uh, specifically Jared for for joining us today, and. Uh, and sharing some of its insights around those regulatory requirements for listing a dietary supplement on Amazon. For those of you who still have questions about this webinar or any other regulatory affairs monitor, please feel free to reach out to us at any time via our toll-free number um, by visiting us online at www.dietcentra.com or just by responding to your invite email. And as always, if you like this webinar and you want to hear more about upcoming webinars, regulatory updates, or just stay up to date with us, visit our website and subscribe to our newsletter. Again, thank you all for joining us today. And from all of us here at Dicentra, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.